Hello students, this is Lanika from Learn Guru Classes. So today we are going to start with class 10 mathematics, the first chapter that is real numbers. So in this particular video, I am going to cover the first topic in the chapter that is Euclid's division lemma. So the first part of the video, I shall be concentrating on the basic concepts of numbers, different types of numbers and after that, we shall switch over to Euclid's division lemma. So I assure you that after watching this video, your concepts about Euclid's division lemma will be very clear. So with this note, let's begin our class. The first and foremost question that arises in our mind is that, what are numbers? Numbers we use in our day-to-day -day lives. Like if I say, a price of 1 kg of potato is rupees 20. Or I gave 3 fourths of the apple to my sister. Or the temperature of London has fallen down to minus 4 degrees centigrade. So each and every sentence mentioned here describes some quantities or amount. So numbers are nothing but representation of quantities or amount. So numbers come in various forms. So let's look into the classification of numbers. Let us try to understand the classification of numbers. Numbers are basically divided into real numbers and imaginary numbers. What are real numbers? Real numbers are those numbers that you can see in the practical world or that we encounter in our day-to-day -day life. That, uh, let us take an example like I have five pens with me. So basically you can count the number of pens from one to five. So all these are examples of real numbers. What are imaginary numbers? So by the name imaginary, we mean that something that is not related to the practical world. So an example of imaginary number, let me give you five I, okay, or 10i. So imaginary number, how can you identify an imaginary number when a real number is accompanied by an imaginary notation or we call it as iota. So that number is called an imaginary number. Again, let us come to the real numbers. Real numbers are divided into rational number and irrational number. Again, rational numbers are divided into fractions, integers, positive integer, negative integer. So, let's try to understand what are real numbers and what are the classification of rational numbers. So, what are rational numbers? Any number that can be represented in the form of P by Q are called as rational numbers where Q should not be equal to 0. Okay, so an example let me give you 5 by 3. We can call it as rational number where 5 is equal to P and 3 is equal to Q and Q is not equal to 0. Okay, so that is called a rational number or that is the uh, definition of rational number. So, rational number are divided into fractions and integers. Fractions are again divided into proper fraction, improper fraction. So, proper fraction are 2 by 3, 3 by 4, 10 by 17. So, any fraction are divided has two components, the upper part and the lower part. So, the upper part is called as the numerator and the lower part is called as the denominator or the denoted by the letter D. Okay. So, when the numerator becomes less than the denominator, when the numerator becomes less than the denominator are called as proper fractions. Like you can see 2 by 3 or fourth 2 is less than 3. 3 by 4, 3 is less than 4. 
So these are examples of proper fraction, improper fraction. When the numerator, value of numerator is greater than the denominator is called as improper fraction like 4 by 3. So of course 4 is greater than 3. 5 by 4, 15 by 11. So these are the examples of improper fraction. Now integers. Integers are divided into positive integer and negative integer. Positive integer, why do we call it as positive integer? Because before the integer, a positive sign is there or nothing is there. So that itself indicates that these are positive integers. On the other hand, negative integer, how can we identify any negative integer? When the negative integer is accompanied or a negative sign is there before the uh, integer is called as negative integer. Now, let's see, positive integers are divided into natural number and whole numbers. So, natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, natural numbers we actually use in our day-to-day -day life. 5 pence, 10 apples. So, all these indicate natural numbers. Okay, next comes whole number. When the, when the entire set of natural number a zero is added to the entire set of natural number, this becomes whole numbers. Basically, with the addition of zero, it makes the entire num set of positive integers complete. So, for this, the name has been given as whole numbers. Now, my question to you is that, actually, we represent rational number in the form of P by Q, right? We represent rational number in the form of P by Q where Q is not equal to 0. Like 5 by 3, I have taken an example so that we can identify as a rational number. Now, how come positive integers as well as negative integers are identified as rational numbers? Because if I take any positive integer like 3, okay, so 3, we have only the upper part while the uh, lower part is missing. So, how can we say that it is in the form of a rational number? So, let me tell you that 3 can be represented in the form of 3 by 1, right? Where if I take 3 is equal to P and 1 is equal to Q, so of course 1 is not equal to 0. So, from here we can say that the integers are also rational numbers. Let me take an example like 0. 0. 0 is a whole number, right? So, 0 I can write as 1 or 0 by 100 also I can take. Okay, any number 0 by any number gives me 0 itself, right? So, 1 is not equal to 0, 100 is not equal to 0. Both of them takes a form of P by Q. So, from that we can say that the integers, the entire set of integers are also rational numbers. Let's come to the very first topic in your class 10 mathematics that is Euclid's division lemma. So, before that, before going into Euclid's division lemma, you should know two things. One is lemma and the other one that is division. Okay. So, lemma is basically a proven statement used for proving another statement. Means a statement already exists that has been proved. So, we are using that particular statement to prove another statement. So, the things will be clear to you when we actually go into the details of Euclid's division lemma. So, now let's see the basics of division method. So, here we are going to study or understand division method that has already been taught to you in your lower classes. Okay. So, let me take a very simple example like 12 divided by 3. Okay. So, what does that mean? 
basically you are dividing 12 into 3 parts. Okay. So the number that you are dividing is called as the dividend and the number with which you are dividing is called as divisor. Okay. So here 12 acts as the dividend and you are dividing 12 by 3 so that becomes the divisor. Okay, so uh, obviously let us try to perform this. Okay, so how do you write 12 by 3? Okay, and you are taking 12 here. So let's try to match any number in the multiplication of 3. Okay, which completely has the number 12. Like 3 1s are 3, 3 2s are 6. 3 3s are 9, 3 4s are 12. So, yes, we get a number exactly that is equal to 12. So, 3 4s are 12. So, 4 you will be writing over here and 12 you will be writing over here. Now, what will you do? You will be subtracting this 12 with 12. So, this you are getting 12 minus 12. Of course, you will get the result as 0. Now, this 4 is called as the quotient. Okay. And this is called as the remainder. Remainder means the one that is, uh, uh, that is remaining after performing the division. So, as nothing is remaining, so, the remainder is 0. Means you can divide 12 equally into 3 parts. Right? Is it clear to you? Now, let us take another example like 25 divided by 3. Okay? So, 25 divided by 3 means what does that mean that you are going to divide 25 into Parts. Okay, so here 25 is acting as the dividend and 3 is acting as the divisor. Okay, so let's do 25 divided by 3. So let's see in the multiplication table of 3 whether it matches with 25 or not. If it does not, if you do not get exactly 25, then the nearest number less than 25 that you get in the multiplication of 3 that has to be considered. So all these things you know in your lower classes. There is nothing new. So 3 into 5 gives us 15. 3 into 6 gives us 18. 3 into 7 gives us 21. 3 eighths are 24. And 3 nines are 27. So if we see 25. So, 25 is a number that is less than 27 but greater than 24. So, 3 8s are 24 has to be considered. So, this part 8 we will be writing over here that will be acting as the quotient and 24 we will be writing over here. Okay. Now, minus 25 minus 24, 4 will give us the answer as 1. So, 1 is the remainder. Okay. So, this concept of division, basically, we are going to apply in Euclid's division lemma. So, it is very simple. Only the thing has been written in such a way to confuse you. Okay. But Euclid's division lemma is nothing but normal division method. So, let's try to understand Euclid's division lemma. So, Euclid's division lemma states that for any two given positive integers a and b, there exist unique whole numbers q and r such that a equals to bq plus r where 0 less than equal to r less than b and a equals to dividend 
V is the divisor, Q is equal to uh, quotient and R equal to numerator. So let's try to analyze each and every sentence of Euclid's division lemma with a with an example. So let's try to let the story starts from two integers a and b. So let's take a and b are two positive integers. So a is equal to 52 and b is equal to 3. Okay. So a is greater than b of course. So a is acting as the dividend and b is acting as the divisor. Why? Since you are dividing 52 by 3. Okay. So let's do the perform the division 52 by 3. We are taking 52 here. Now we will encounter each and every figures uh, separately like we will take consider 5 now. So in the multiplication table of 3 we have 3 1s are 3, 3, 2, just 6. So, 5 is a number that is less than 3 but greater than 6. So, we will be considering 3, 1s are 3. So, what should we do? We are going to take 1 here, this 1 here in the quotient and this 3 we are going to write over here. Now, what we will do? 5 minus 3. So, 5 minus 3 gives us 2. So, of course, 2 is less than 3. So, 2 is less than 3. It cannot be. So, we are taking 2 from here and bringing it down. Now, if we see the multiplication table of 3, we have 3, 7s are 21 and 3, 8s are 24. So, obviously, we will be considering 3 multiplied by 7 is 21. So, 7 we will be writing here and 21 we will be writing here. Now, next step you are to uh, subtract 22 from 21 and 1 you are getting. So, we can say that 17 acts as the quotient and 1 is acting as the remainder. Okay, so from here what are you getting? A equals to 52, B equals to 3, Q is equal to 17 and remainder is equal to 1. Now try to, there is a specific formula according to Euclid's division lemma that if you use the combination of B, Q and R, you can actually get the value of the dividend. So, let's check. Okay. So, let's do B, Q, B multiplied by Q plus R. So, what is B over here? 3. What is Q over here? 17. And what is R over here? 1. So, 7 into 3 gives us 51 plus 1. So, you are getting 52 as the value. So, it is exactly equal to the dividend that is equals to A. So, from here we can say that A is equal to B, Q plus R. Okay. Now, there are two things that has to be taken care of. That is, in the sentence, it is already given that there exist unique whole numbers Q and R. Unique whole numbers Q and R, what does that mean? That the value of the quotient and the value of the remainder should be different. So, over here, if you see, you are getting 17 as the quotient and 1 as the remainder. So, obviously, both of them are different numbers. So, hence, we can say that there exist two unique whole numbers Q and R. And, of course, it is a uh, whole number. 17, is, we can say it is a whole number. 1 is also a whole number. Why is it not say both are natural number? Because Q can be 0. Like, if I do 24, 5 divided by 5. So, of course, I will be getting the remainder as 0. 
and 0 is a whole number. So, from that we can say that the, there exist two unique whole numbers given up. Next is we have to look into this condition that is 0 less than equal to R less than B. Okay. So, remainder can either be 0 like here you are getting the remainder is 0 or remainder should be less than the divisor. So, everywhere if you see remainder you are getting as 1, divisor you are getting as, this is the divisor, divisor you have 3. So, of course, 1 is less than 3. So, each and at every uh, possible examples, you will be getting, always you will be getting the remainder less than the divisor. So, see, Euclid's division lemma tells you about the best, very basic division method which we have studied in the lower classes. So, let's try to understand Euclid's division lemma better with the help of some examples. So, the first question is, a number when divided by 73 gives 34 as quotient and 23 as remainder. Find the number. So, basically, a number is there. So, let us write, let the number be A. Okay? So, this A, if you are dividing by, dividing the number A by 73, it gives you 34 as the quotient and 23 as remainder. So, you want to find out the number means you are to find out the value of the dividend. So, let the number be A, which is the dividend. Which is the dividend. So, here B divisor B is 73 quotient Q is 34 and remainder R is 23. So, you want to find out the number A. So, you are basically going to use Euclid's division lemma. Okay. So, according to, according to, Euclid's, Euclid's division lemma, we can write A equals to BQ plus R. So, B is here 73, quotient is 34 plus remainder is 23. So, let's perform the multiplication 73 into 34. It gives 2, 29, 3, 3 is a 9, 7, 3 is a 21. So, 2, 8, 4, 2. Okay? So, 2, 4, 8, 2 plus 23. So, it gives plus 23. So, it gives 5, 0, 5, 2. So, the answer is 2, 5, 0, 5. Okay, so A, the value of A is 2502. So, how can you cross verify whether your, uh, the one that you have solved is correct or not? Now, you can do A, the, the dividend is 2505 and the divisor is uh, 73. So, basically you can actually perform the division and will find that quotient is 34 and 23 is the remainder. So, let's try to look into the next sum. So, the next sum is, by what number should 1365 be divided to get 31 as quotient and 32 as remainder? So, let's try to understand the question first. By what number 
should 1365 be divided? Means you are to divide 1365 by certain number. So that you get 31 as the quotient and 32 as the remainder. So what is that number? So basically you are up to find out the divisor. So solution is let the let the divisor be B. Okay. And uh, the dividend A is your 1365. And clearly quotient is 31. And remainder R is 32. Okay. Now let's try to apply Euclid's division grammar according to Euclid's division lemma A equals to B cube plus R. So A is 1365. B is you don't know. You have to find out. 31 plus of 32. So 32 can be taken to the left hand side. 1365 minus 32 equals to 31B. So 1365, 32 gives us, this is 3, 3, 3, 1. So 1, 3, 3, 3 by 31 equals to B. So if you multiply this, uh, divide 1333 by 31. So, what are you getting? 31, uh, 4, 4, 124, 31, yes. So, uh, you are getting 124, 124. So, this is 9. This becomes 0, 1. So, 93. So, you are getting the remainder as 0. So, B is equals to 43. So now one thing to note here is that what is the value of the divisor that you are getting? B is equal to 43. What is the value of the remainder that you are getting? 32. So obviously the value of remainder R is less than the divisor B that is 43 which is according to Euclid's division lemma. So this is about the question and the one that we have done for the rough work that also proves that here 31 is acting as the divisor and this is the remainder. So obviously the remainder is less than the divisor each and every time. Okay. So Euclid's division, any simple division method follows Euclid's division lemma. So this is all about Euclid's division lemma. I hope that you have understood the concepts I have tried to explain to you. So if you like this video, please subscribe to Learn Guru classes, like, comment and share it with your friends, family and relatives. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.